Ladies and cool kids, Andy here, day 191 of the In The Winner show. So, you can see me on the camera. If you're listening to this as a podcast, go and watch on my YouTube video, my YouTube channel. I am recording these as videos from now on, so I'm going to make them proper sexy videos. You're going to see my cute little face. Look at these cute little cheeks. He's so cute. Cute little boy. And I'm going to do them all as videos. Um, I'm also using a different microphone. I've got a little lapel mic here rather than my big sexy normal microphone that I use. So if the audio quality, I have no idea how good it's going to be. If it's too shit, then I'll just go back to the usual microphone. But I like this better. I actually stole this idea from Radical who uses like one of these tiny little lapel mics because it's more like, you know, flexible. You can take it with you. You can tell I'm nervous. I don't like talking in front of the camera. It's not something I've practiced enough, but I will get better at it with time. And just like my podcast sucked at the start, these YouTube videos will suck at the start. Let's fucking do this together. What are we going to talk about today? We are going to talk about girls being dumb bitches. So let me get my phone. I'm, I'm being flippant when I say dumb bitches, by the way. But this is the third girl now that we have had, that Imogen, my girlfriend, and I have been seen together. Who has done this? So we had sex with this one girl like a week and a half ago, the day after we had sex with her, Imogen sent her a message and said like, hey, we had a lot of fun. Like you were super hot. Are you free this Saturday? And this girl like just doesn't reply for like a week and a half. And so we're both thinking like, okay, well, she obviously like, I don't know, she's had some fucking second thoughts or whatever. She sends this message. Hey, I'm sorry that I ghosted for so long. I'm not sure if I'm keen on meeting up again. It felt a little like you weren't that attracted to me, so it's probably best you find someone else. And Imogen replied and said, basically like, what the fuck are you talking about? But like, you know, as a girl, she obviously says it a little nicer than that. That's what I would have said. What the fuck are you talking about? But this is the third girl in the last like six months, three months that we've seen that has, after the first time we have sex, thought that Imogen wasn't into her. So it's very clear that I'm into these girls, but For some reason, these girls are getting the impression or Imogen is giving off the impression that she's not that into them. And like, man, it's got us both like, not self-conscious, but like we're like racking our brains because we're going like, what in the fucking Christ are you doing during sex that's giving them the impression you're not into them? And like, we're so confused. She's like sitting on their face. She's fucking licking their pussies. She's like making out with them. Like this chick, like Imogen was talking the whole time saying like, holy shit, you're so hot. Like you look so good. You're doing such a good job. I was like fucking this chick's brains out. I ended up like coming on her face and the both of them like made out with my cum. Like I'm not sure what more Imogen could have done to make it clear to this chick of like, I'm attracted to you. You're doing a good job. I mean, like she even literally sent her a text afterwards saying like, we had a lot of fun. Are you free this Saturday? I don't know what more. We're so confused. It's fucking interesting, but like, holy shit. Like she's obviously giving off these vibes of like, I'm not that into you, which is so confusing because she's like, like I said, she's like going down on them. She's making them orgasm. She's moaning. She's making out with them for like 45 minutes straight. Like, I don't know. I'm so confused. We're both just like so fucking confused by this. Like we're obviously doing something. We're obviously giving off, Imogen is giving off some sort of impression of like, you know, I'm not that into you, but like, or these girls, the other thing we thought is like, we are kind of, what's a nice way to phrase this? the target market that we go for tends to skew a little lower in terms of self-esteem. That's the nicest way I can phrase that. We date like 18 to 21 year old girls who are very submissive, who haven't had a lot of sexual experience. Generally speaking, those girls haven't built up enough self-esteem because they haven't had enough dating experience. They're still young, they're figuring out their bodies and especially submissive girls tend to skew a little lower on the self-esteem. And that may just be a part of it. It may just be like, yeah, we're just dating like fucking inexperienced and virgin girls who like, haven't built up that self-esteem yet and obviously you have to make it really clear to them that like we had a good time but like even then that doesn't excuse that doesn't like answer like that fully doesn't that doesn't fully satisfy you know my curiosity there because like I said she's still like making it really bloody clear like I had a fucking good time with you you were so hot you were so sexy like confusing as hell whatever so we're also going to talk about Mr. Radical Hello, Mr. Radical. So Radical is a moderator on my forums. And if you're wondering why I keep looking down, it's because I've got notes on my laptop and it's like easier for me to look at. I need to put the notes like up there so I don't have to like 
so it doesn't look like I'm looking away from the camera. How about if I just hold my laptop there? That is deeply uncomfortable, but whatever, I'll sacrifice for you guys. So Mr. Radical is, what if I hold it there? That's perfect. So Mr. Radical is doing a 365, just like I am. So he's doing like a YouTube video a day and he's on like roughly the same amount of days that I'm on. I think he's on like a hundred and fucking, what am I on? He's on like 150 or something. And some of his videos are getting really good. Like the last few videos, like shout outs to you, Mr. Radical. Some of your videos have been really good, man. And he did this one um, recently. It was called something like my problem with the red pill or something like that. And he had a couple of like really good insights in that. One was like, he just phrased it very well, which was, he was talking about guys in the red pill and just guys in like MGTOW and all that kind of stuff. Guys who like, have problems with women like they don't like women they think women are you know sluts or like whatever it is they just don't like women that much i was there myself i completely get it no hard fit you know nothing against you if you don't like women it's something to get over though and he was talking about women that guys that want to keep disliking women or guys that don't do anything to work on the fact that they don't like women they think that that's just like a normal state of being it's a normal place to be it's where you should be and he said dating women when you hate them just sounds masochistic and that was just like the perfect perfect phrasing of that i've thought that myself many 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 times like you're just making yourself miserable if you sit there and hate women anyway this isn't about the red pill this is about radical he's had a couple of other really 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 good ideas and sort of got me thinking because i did watch the first like 20 videos of his 20 youtube videos of his and you know when you're at the start your stuff kind of sucks and he wouldn't mind me saying that he'd agree my podcast fucking sucked at the start they probably still suck now they'll be a better they'll be better in six months they'll be absolutely orders of magnitude better this fucking youtube video sucks right now because this is one of the first times i've talked on camera i've only done this like eight videos or something over the last like two years where i've actually talked at the camera it makes me deeply fucking uncomfortable it's something to overcome something to work on and get better at but his first 50 videos in particular i noticed that a lot of what he, he spoke about was stuff that I had already covered. He was very much like rehashing the same stuff I was without a lot of new insights. And now he's very much walking his own path. And this isn't a criticism of him. What I'm getting to is when I first set up my website, a lot of the stuff that I had on there was very much rehashes of what Good Looking Loser, Chris, had talked about. And I was basically just rehashing his videos. And I even had someone who said, to be honest, I really like your stuff, but to be honest, this isn't any different from Good Looking Loser. This is a copy paste. And that, that really sucked to hear at the start, but it's very true. When you first start a new endeavor, what you're gonna find, like if it's art, if it's content creation, if it's YouTube, if it's a podcast, whatever it is, you're going to find that it is very hard to have your own voice. And even if you try to, you will just end up like mimicking other people that you like, your idols, people you respect, people whose content you're already consuming. And I don't think that's a bad thing. In fact, I think it's kind of necessary. There's a good book called Steal Like an Artist. I'll leave a link in the description or the show notes below. And I read this book, the first time I read this book, it blew my fucking mind. Because the whole point he says is, you have to steal like an artist. You Like to be an artist, you have to steal. In order to find your own voice, you have to go and copy like 50 other people's voices. You don't know how to express yourself properly until you've, through trial and error, tried a bunch of different voices, tried a bunch of different mediums, if it's something like art, tried a bunch of different formats, if it's something like YouTube. You kind of have to copy other people and then you will figure out your own stuff. And so I'm really, really, really glad that Radical is now at the point where he has his own voice. His shit is like very different from mine. A lot of the insights that he's now starting to talk about are stuff that makes me go like, oh shit, that's like, yeah, I wouldn't have thought of that, dude. That's a very interesting angle, especially his, his takes on like the red pill and stuff like that. And his advice to newbies, is often very different from the advice I give. Even his take on the red pill is different from me. I don't hate the red pill. He, he won't say he hates the red pill, but he has a lot of issues with it. I, for the most part, don't. I just think it's a stepping stone and eventually you want to move out of the red pill and move into actually like going outside and talking to girls, not hating them, not caring too much about female male dynamics, just getting some practice in, being okay with being a fucking beta male and stopping this obsession with like, I gotta be an alpha, bro. An alpha has to have good body language. Look at this good body. Oh, look at that alpha male body language, bro. You gotta keep your chat, you keep your chin straight forward, bro. A beta would look down, bro. An alpha would look up like this. Look at this alpha, fucking alpha. Like that shit's nonsense. I think that's like goofy shit. I've debunked that a million times. It's just like the goofiest shit. So 
point I'm getting to is I have some issues with the, the red pill. This isn't a discussion about the red pill. Radical like really doesn't like the red pill. I really like that he's moving away from my stuff. And I really like that me myself, I moved, I did this probably two years ago. I moved away from good looking losers stuff. Like there's a lot of similarities with my stuff and good looking loser. I don't like have very much that I disagree with him about apart from like his retention guide and lying to women. I'm very much against that. But when you first start some new content, whether it's art, YouTube, podcast, whatever it is, writing, you're just going to naturally find that you just copy paste like the other people. You just, you have to, right? Like you're learning to, you don't even know how to like content create at the start. And the best way to do that is to just look at someone else, do what they're doing, see if you can mimic it in a very similar style. Maybe you put like a little bit of your own twist on it, but then over time, you start putting like more and more of your own twist on it. Then you start like branching out and talking about stuff that they never talked about. You start trying different voices, you experiment, you look at other content, you try and copy that. This is all very much just like a process of like copying little bits and pieces from everyone else, which is why I talk all the time about like this whole thing, this whole self-improvement thing is like a, a process of experimentation. You're supposed to take little bits from here, little bits from here, little bits from here, little bits from there, add it all together. It's like a big hodgepodge, hodgepodge of your own recipe. You make your own recipe, you figure out what works for you. So radical good shit. Anyone else who's doing content creation, just steal. There was an article on Good Looking Loser that he did. And he did it years ago. And it was called like, why your version of Good Looking Loser is going to fail or something along those lines. And he was basically criticizing people who copy his website. I'm going to do the exact opposite. If you're thinking about content creation, copy my website. Just literally copy the same shit. Like, I don't give a fuck if you don't hit control C and then press control V, you like you fucking scumbag. But like, just copy the same concepts, write them in your own voice, put a little bit of your own twist on them, just cop literally copy all of my stuff. Copy like me talking about honesty, copy me talking about giving yourself permission to suck, copy me talking about the numbers game. I stole the numbers game from Chris from Good Looking Loser. I just stole that. I just 100% stole that. Copy everything that I have on there and then through that process, through you learning to copy me, you'll start developing your own voice. Like, I don't have a problem with plagiarism. I think that people are fucking too, like, timid when it comes to plagiarism. Oh, don't copy my stuff. Oh, my God. I would like you to give me credit if you copy my stuff. Like, I'll throw that in there. Just like I always shout out to Good Looking Loser. I shout out to Black Dragon Blog when he, because a lot of my open relationship stuff comes from him. So give me a shout out. But, yeah, copy my shit. Plagiarize all you want. Through doing so, you will learn to get, you will learn to develop your own voice. And that's what I eventually want to. I don't give a fuck if you copy me. Don't do it forever because that would be just stupid. But eventually get to a point where you have your own voice. And the only way to do that is to copy. Copy, copy, copy. Steal like an artist. Do that. Radical did. And he didn't do it intentionally. I'm like, I'm kind of calling him out here and being a bit of a dick. But like his first few videos were very much rehashes of stuff that I had talked about. And just like mine was rehashes of good looking loser. And look where he is now. His shit is like radically different from mine. Pun intended. Pun fucking intended. He's a good dude. So go copy like Radical, go copy like I did, go copy like any proper artist does. You're supposed to copy, you're supposed to steal like an artist and over time you will find your voice. That's some fucking good dance moves. You in the podcast who aren't watching the YouTube video, you didn't get to see those dance moves. So I would go and watch the YouTube video if I was you people, you're missing out.